listen to the voices of the sea, my son. Our lives are married to the sea. Married to the circle of the sun, to the stars and to the planets, and to the ever-turning earth whose orbits measure day and night, even centuries. And also measure the brief years in the life of a man. There is a fish in us, my son. Life evolved on the floor of the sea. We swam with herring and blue water spouts. But the great creator drew man out of the animal into the human state. And man adapted to land. He learned to walk upright, to work with tools and fire, and to plant seeds in the earth for food. And he learned to fight with a sword. Man conquered his environment. His only enemy was man. Today, the circle of the sun has come round once more, and the wreath of white clouds on the summit of the mountain guides us. Let us know the touch of love, my son. Bid the winds and the tides set us down within the family of man. In a small corner of the world, off the west coast of Scotland, beyond Sky and Tyree, and across the Minch for four score miles, stands the small string of islands known as the Outer Hebrides. And to the southern tip, of the lonely Hebrides lies the island of Bar, being seven miles in length and four in breadth. And within the southwest end of this isle, and in the middle of the bay, there is an ancient castle called Kishimul, pertaining to the MacNeil of Bar. Listen to the voices of Scotland's oldest castle. For this is the talisman, this castle in the sea. The ancient walls will tell us why this fort of a thousand years has special symbolic meaning for all mankind. The Hebrides lies far to the north on the latitude of Labrador. The winters are long and the climate is inhospitable. Rain falls two out of every three days, and the bare glacier roughened rocks offers only a thin layer of soil in spots. There is no food here. It is a harsh land. Then why did the early settlers come to this remote place? The history of man tells but one tale. War. Two thousand years ago, when the Roman army invaded England, many people left the mainland to pursue their long dream for peace and sailed to the edge of the world at the setting sun, to the remote isles of the Hebrides. Almighty Father, bless this and render the breath of the sky propitious that it may urge this bark over the water to safe haven. Bring your own food to these islands. Stow away barley, seeds, and oats. Bring your sheep and animals. And be not craven of spirit, ye who come. As well as food, bring courage and determination. You must be willing to work or you will starve. The grassy bogs offer peat for fire, and the sea offers fish. This is the only bounty. Build your houses low and nestled under the hill. Pack the walls three feet thick to keep out the wind, and bind long grasses to the rafters to shed rain. Here you may find peace from the marauding tribes. 
Caesar's armed legions cannot reach you here. This was hardly Eden. Severed from all neighbors of the east, parted by the seas, they were an isolated people. But still there was hope in the air. Here was independence and separation from the conquerors. And after 500 years of occupation, the Roman Empire collapsed and Scotland was left to her own people. But even on the hidden island, war will seek you out in time. The marauding Vikings began to sack the Hebrides in the 8th century, and the people of Barra lived in fear as the outlaw Vikings looted and murdered for hundreds of years. Mine can retreat so far. Then he must stop and take a stand. Carry your banners to the far isles of the sea. Sail your ships to Barra to colonize a settlement. Christianize the heathens and join hands with the kingdom of Norway to drive away the Viking raiders. Bring love of God to all men. The inhabitants of Barra finally received help when Neil of the castle came to Barra in 1030 from Argyle. The 21st chief of the clan, Neil, built Kishimur, the castle in the sea, as a defensive fort to fight off the Viking menace. And over the years, the attackers were repulsed. Finally, when the Vikings were driven away, Barra enjoyed a brief period of safety and happiness under the protection of this Clan Neil stronghold. Time shrinks the world, and war across the sea finally brought the fatal blow to Mara. We shall never, in any way, consent to submit to the rule of the British. For it is not for glory in fight, for riches, or for honors, but for freedom alone which no good man loses but with his life. For 400 years, Scotland fought England in vain. The Scots, in their last attempt to restore the royal Stuarts to the throne, were defeated by the British and brutally slaughtered at Culloden in 1746. Thereafter, the crown suppressed the clans and Scotland was full of broken men. The only hope for freedom was to emigrate to other countries, and so the clearances began to North Carolina, to Nova Scotia, and to Vermont. Then, man could escape to a new world. The glen that was my father's own must be by him forsaken. The home that was my father's home is leveled with the broken. Ruled by a power beyond the ocean, Kishimu Castle ceased to have a function. Abandoned and gutted by fire, it was sold by the financially distressed McNeil descendants in 1838. Unoccupied, the castle was vandalized by the crews from salt boats who year after year tore down the masonry and used the stones for ballast in their boats. Behold the ancient Kishimul, the hearthstone of the clan. The castle has passed to other hands. The McNeils have moved to other lands. Tis thus the mighty falls. After the turn of the century, a small boy from the United States was taken for a visit to faraway Barra by his mother. Born in Michigan, the boy saw for the first time the family estate of his ancestors. You go back in an unbroken line of chiefs for 16 centuries. Mac 
means son of. McNeil, then, is son of Neil. The clan motto is conquer or die. Oui. Your people has been sold to strangers. The proprietress of your estate is now Lady Gordon Cathcart, who lives in London. Can you hear me, Castle? I see you. Kijamal, Kijamal Castle. I, Laddie, I hear you. Now listen to Kijamal. Listen to the voice of the old castle. You are the 45th chief, Robert Lister McNeil, of the remnants of a clan that is spread all over the earth. You have come from America to see a broken body. Behold, the castle of your fathers is a tower of ruined masonwork. But this monument of a thousand years cannot be ignored, do you hear? Yes, old castle. I hear. Mark, be a man. Leave something for your son who comes after. Family is an everlasting anchorage filled with love and equality. Group the clan. The family of man should be one. I shall try. And shall the castle be left in ruin? Or should it be rebuilt like a rock upon a rock? Shall the ocean in a few years wash away these remaining walls? No, I shall rebuild it when I'm a man. Then do so. I will. After 200 years of silence, a chief speaks again. I await the day when you shall inhabit the castle. the lone shieling on the misty isle, mountains divide us and a waste of seas, yet still the blood is strong, the heart is highland, and we in dreams behold the Hebrides. The impossible dreams of youth stretched from snow castles in Michigan to the stone castle in Scotland. The boy had waited for the day when his father could buy back the castle in the sea. But his father died without regaining the Barra estate, and Robert's dreams could not be realized at that time. How could the chief acquire once again the family stronghold in the Hebrides? Kijimul's galley, bringing McNeil the brave. Swift as a speeding arrow glides the noble keel. Home to the shores of Barra comes bold McNeil. The year 1937 was a new beginning for the clan McNeil. 900 years after the coming of the first chief, the McNeil of Barra came again. This time to stay and to restore, to rebuild Kishimul Castle. Not as a fort, but as a home for the clan. The boy in Michigan grew to a man, but before he was able to acquire the castle, he had reached the age of 47. It was only with the death of the London owner that the McNeil was able to take his life savings and repurchase the lands and the castle of his family. So, after 200 years of neglect, the estate was owned again by a McNeil. Today, and every spring in the United States at Marlboro, Vermont, the McNeil and Lady Barra prepare to leave their Vermont winter home and travel to the Outer Hebrides to begin again the summer reconstruction work on Kishimul Castle, as has been their practice for over 30 years. 
The snowy winters in Vermont are milder than those in the Hebrides, where the severe winds and sleet restrict winter construction work on the castle. So each year, the indomitable chief starts out again to complete his impossible task, the rebuilding of his castle in the sea. galley of McNeil sailed on her billowing purple sails into the rocky cove of Kishimo. The women gazed seaward, for now there would be feasting in the great hall of the ancient castle of Kishimo. And the laughter of children and the love of women and the red wine will flow and the music and the singing will ring out over the waters. Neil of Barra is a sprightly 79 years old. He received his education in architecture both in the United States and in France. He practiced architecture in Washington, D.C., where he designed office buildings for the United States government and for foreign embassies. Two wars interrupted his profession. The McNeil was an officer in the Canadian Overseas Forces in the First World War. And during the Second World War, he was chairman of the British Government Inventions Board. In spite of the problem of finances, the chief has continued with the restoration. The McNeil and his wife have borne the greatest financial burden of this work. But he has received some funds through the Ancient Monuments Board of the British Government and from members of the McNeil clan from all over the world. The restoration of this castle has uh, been going on for just about 30 years now, intermittently, of course. And in uh, restoring the castle, I have, I think, successfully uh, preserved all the items of archaeological interests, all the valuable ancient uh, features. At the same time, I've had to compromise uh, with uh, modern uh, living and have certain modern conveniences so we can live a normal life here. To see what has been accomplished in the restoration of the castle during the past 30 years, uh, let us uh, go around and look at various parts of the castle. The chapel was the first building erected in the castle after the curtain wall was built around the island. It was a primitive chapel with a dirt floor, but it symbolized the final fields of the clan. The second section to be built in those ancient days was the watchtower with a sentry stand above the guard room and a dungeon below. Adjoining was built the great hall. Originally it was just a one-story black house without a fireplace and at some later time they increased the height of the ceiling and made it more elaborate. Then on the west side another black house was constructed, the Tainist house or the heir's house. This is where my wife and I now live. The last part of the castle construction was the Great Tower. This was a grandiose undertaking for that time and civilization. They were a primitive people without mechanical appliances of any sort. And how they lifted these large stones up five stories in height is still quite a mystery. The chief lived on the top floors and below were barracks for soldiers. Another effective defensive feature of the castle was the stone chute. The occupants could drop stones straight down on the attacking Vikings without being exposed to flying arrows. Chutes were built over the entrance ways to the castle and to the tower. To understand why this castle exists here today on a little island 60 miles off the main west coast of Scotland, in the rugged Atlantic Ocean. We have to go back a couple of thousand years uh, to the time that the Romans were forging north on the continent of Europe and driving the Belgic tribes ahead of them, slaughtering them. Now the Romans left Scotland, if my memory serves me right, uh, about 480 AD. From then on, there's a sort of a hiatus 
in the history of these Celts, very little is known about them. We do know that in 795, the marauding Vikings from Norway came here to these, all these islands that lie off the west coast of Scotland, the Hebrides. Uh, unfortunately, however, uh, Barra was right on the highway between Iceland and their uh, lands to raid England, Ireland, and Scotland. In the meantime, in 1030, our Neil came here, found, say, on a silver defensive nature's moat, this little island, uh, fresh water, a great of stones, Celtic dune. So they considered to be a modern castle. This chapel ancient is the first permanent building built in 1000. Uh, the clan Neil to this little uh, settlement part and part of the kingdom of Norway. Simple religion in chapel. Same in appearance years ago. And was appropriate takes on it. My wife has very kindly taken the and secured. And the an Holy water font, which we found in the debris here, uh, and is undoubtedly uh, contemporary with the arrival of the clan and the building of the chapel in 1030. And here is very, on this side of the chapel, is this very beautiful bishop's uh, cope, which is very ancient, about 400 years old. And I might digress for a moment and say that the curtain wall going around the high tide line of the building is the outside wall of the several buildings within the castle. I had to rebuild all of these buildings completely. As I mentioned, uh, this was the great hall. It was anything but a great hall in its earliest days. It had an earthen floor, the ceiling height was only seven feet, a peat fire in the middle and louvers to let the smoke out. It was the meeting place of the clan. They met here frequently and one might almost say constantly every night. And when there was a clan war on, the soldiers slept on the earthen floor and straw. At one time when the clan had a, a war on its hands, they built a sleeping loft here halfway between the floor and the ceiling and they uh, opened up the stonework and put a ladder from the loft up to the wall work so that in case of an enemy attack the soldiers could immediately get up there without having to come down to the ground and go up again. At this end of the great hall are these muskets which were given to me by a friend and they came uh, directly from the battlefield of Culloden in 1746. They are regular English army muskets of that period. Another problem we encountered during the reconstruction was removing the huge amounts of dirt that covered most of the castle. In the dungeon below the watchtower, the dirt was 10 feet deep. How this great quantity of dirt got there, we do not know. Under this cover is the ancient water well, which was made by nature and not by man, and was the principal reason why both the Celts and the Clan Neil located their respective castles here. It is fresh water. Today is a nice day, and we try to take advantage of the good weather and put in as many hours of work as we can. The reconstruction has been a slow process. All of the building materials had to be brought here to the island in boats, the stones, cement, lumber, and so on. And normal supplies are not to be had in Barra. They had to be ordered ahead from the mainland. Now, after all these years, the end is approaching. Just a little more work on the great tower
uh, and uh, a couple other little items and so on, and the whole job will be completed. It has, of course, uh, been a wonderful joy to me uh, to do this work, and I am extremely grateful, filled with gratitude, for all the friendship and loyalty uh, that the clan scattered all over the world uh, has given to me. It is, of course, the fulfillment of a life's dream on my part. And consequently, I think that I am one of the happiest uh, people in the world. I feel that I am extremely wealthy in friendship, unbelievably wealthy in friendship. thought when the chief came here first that uh, we'd never see this castle in the state it's been just now. There was nothing left there but a pile of rocks which he eventually built up after years of hard work. And uh, we're all quite pleased to see it in this state. And uh, it means a lot to the clan McNeil. Child, I can remember the crumbling ruined building. I often amongst its rocks when I was little. Now I'm proud and pleased to see old castle restored again, occupied by the McNeil. Uh, what the reconstruction of this castle in the past 30 years? And we are most grateful to McNeil for restoring us thousands of years, which is a delight to us all. The job of the castle is here complete now. It's taken a number of years. We've spent but still we're all quite pleased now. It's here finished. Over a thousand years castle has stood as a symbol of Barra. It has been something of its former Kneels of the world can take taller. and the life and the stuff of the was always and then depend Bring our clan together, a resurgence of the clan, of the family feeling. May the people of the world become like the clan, unified, nation and nation, people and people living in peace. Now, as I look at that Kishmal Castle, uh, it isn't just a structure, it's the symbol of so many wonderfully fine things. And there it stands, uh, very proudly, uh, and I'm extremely grateful that I've had the privilege in life to make it into a symbol of peace for all mankind. The castle is the symbol. Let us listen to the voices of the future, my son. Sail? Where? Look. Do you see it? A sail! A sail! A ship! A shadow of a ship! Ring the alarm bell! Lock the gate! Lock the gate! Ring the bell! Which quarter comes the ship? Is it a galley? To the south. I saw it at the sky. Where is it now? Do you see it? It's in the mist. It, it disappeared. To your post! It plunged and veered and, and took a certain shape. 
face, her approach was like death. Keep that watch. Man the tower and light the signal fire. Keep the watch. Light the signal fire. The enemy approaches. Light the fire! Is it a galley? Where is the ship? with whom we cope, with man's intelligence, there is always hope. The world stands 
out on either side, no wider than the heart is wide. Above the world is stretched the sky, no higher than the soul is high. The heart can push the sea and land farther away on the either hand. The soul can split the sky in two and let the face of God shine through.